Tonight, breaking news as we come on the air. Hunter Biden's federal gun case late today, now in the hands of the jury. What we've learned, the major fire in Miami, the rescues and news just in tonight of an arrest. We're tracking severe weather, extreme heat. It's moving east. And a breaking headline from China at this hour reports four American teachers have been stabbed. What we've learned so far. First tonight, Hunter Biden's federal gun case. The jury now deliberating his fate. Hunter Biden choosing not to take the stand. Members of his family, including the first lady, in that courthouse. The prosecution aware of that during closing arguments and what the prosecutor told the jury about the family sitting in those front rows. Also breaking tonight, Donald Trump's interview with a New York probation officer. That interview required of all convicted felons. What that probation officer will now do with the judge said to sentence Trump in weeks. The chilling new images here from inside the Israeli operation to rescue four hostages in Gaza. The moment soldiers find three of them. Coming under fire while getting them out, Israeli special forces posing as Palestinian refugees, saying we got the diamonds when they found the hostages. You'll see these harrowing images from the inside. Here in the U.S. at this hour, the severe weather threat and the record heat across multiple states, then all of this heading east. And tonight, Florida now bracing for potential flooding up to 20 inches of rain. Also, the massive fire near downtown Miami, the city's largest fire in 25 years rescuing more than 40 people and the worker in the building found shot nearby. Tonight there's news coming in on a suspect. The shocking damage to a passenger jet struck by a hailstorm coming into land. Part of the plane's nose ripped away. The cockpit windows shattered. The dramatic video spectators at a rodeo when a bull jumps the barrier heading right for spectators flipping a woman into the air. And America Strong tonight, the moment on the Antiques Roadshow, the woman who has held on to a cherished baseball bat for years and what it's worth now. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening. It is great to start another week with all of you at home. We have several breaking headlines tonight. Former President Trump's meeting with a probation officer after his conviction. That news coming in from China reports four American teachers have been stabbed there. But we do begin tonight with Hunter Biden's federal gun trial. Late this afternoon, the case going to the jury. The president's son facing three felony counts. Hunter Biden and his wife arriving for closing arguments. Many members of the Biden family were there filling the front rows, including First Lady Jill Biden in that courtroom, showing up every day but one. The prosecution aware of that image right before the jury, the family sitting there, the first lady supporting her son, and the prosecutor told the jury today that does not matter. ABC's Terry Moran leading us off at the courthouse tonight. Late today, the jury getting the case in Hunter Biden's trial. Six men and six women will decide the fate of the president's son, who is facing three felony gun charges. As closing arguments began, Hunter Biden's friends and family packed into the first three rows of the courtroom, the first lady attending the trial nearly every day. Prosecutor Leo Wise pointed them out. You may recognize some of them from the news or from the community, he told the jury. None of that matters, adding no one is above the law. Prosecutors argued that Hunter Biden knew he was using drugs when he claimed to be drug-free on this federal background check form when he purchased a Colt handgun in 2018. They pointed to Hunter's own words about his addiction in his memoir, Beautiful Things. I used my superpower, finding crack anytime, anywhere. And the government pointed to hundreds of texts, including some Hunter sent to then-girlfriend Halle Biden, his brother Bo's widow, in the two days after buying the gun, describing waiting for a dealer and sleeping on a car smoking crack. There's my truth. Prosecutors told the jury to take the defendant's word for it. That's his truth. But defense attorney Abby Lowell argued no one saw Hunter Biden use drugs in the days surrounding the purchase of the gun. There was no actual witness, Lowell said, saying prosecutors don't have proof. And Hunter Biden's defense attorney also lasered in on the women in his life who testified about his drug use, pointing out that his ex-wife, they divorced in 2015, had no direct knowledge of the facts in this case, and that Halle Biden got an immunity deal from prosecutors to testify. Lowell also railed against the prosecution's questioning of Hunter's daughter, Naomi, calling their cross-examination of her extraordinarily cruel. It's time to end this case, he concluded. Jurors deliberated for just about an hour before heading home. They'll resume deliberations in the morning. Prosecutors say this is a simple case for them, but they will have to consider three separate charges and a defense that asked them to look not only at the prosecution's evidence of Hunter Biden's drug addictions, but at the evidence that he was trying to get clean and so wasn't lying when he bought that gun.
David. All right, Terry Moran, you'll be there again tomorrow. Terry, thank you. Meanwhile, tonight, former President Donald Trump's interview with a New York probation officer late today required of all convicted felons. The officer will now write a report to the judge who will sentence Trump in just weeks. Here's our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky. Tonight, former President Donald Trump taking his next step as a convicted criminal, meeting for the first time with a probation officer before he's sentenced next month. The purpose of this meeting, which was conducted remotely, Trump at his Mar-a-Lago estate, is to help the officer prepare a report with a sentencing recommendation for Judge Juan Marchand. Trump was found guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records to cover up a hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels. He has attacked the verdict and the judge over and over. I just went through a rigged trial in New York. With a highly conflicted, and I mean highly conflicted, judge, where there was no crime, it was made up, fabricated stuff. No word on what Trump told the probation officer today, but her report to the judge must include Trump's own description of his crime, whether he accepts responsibility, and anything he wants to say about why he did it. Unlike most convicts, Trump was allowed to have an attorney with him for today's interview, which is generally intended to provide the judge with a more rounded picture of the person about to be sentenced, including their personal, financial, and professional history. We're told this interview lasted just under a half hour. David Judge Mershon already knows plenty about Donald Trump, whom he will sentence July 11th, just one month from tomorrow. David? Aaron Katursky tonight. Aaron, thank you. We are seeing the harrowing images for the first time here tonight from inside Gaza, the Israeli raid to rescue four hostages held by Hamas. Those Israeli special forces saying, we got the diamonds when they found the hostages. One of those hostages freed. Their father had died just hours before, never seeing his son come home. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge in Israel tonight. In a hellish gun battle, this is the moment Israeli commandos stormed a residential building in Gaza in broad daylight. Breaching an apartment, finding those three male hostages. Shlomi Ziv on that bed, holding up his arms, shouting, look, look, they're here. The other two nearby. You see sheer terror in their faces, then shouting their names, Almog, Andre, and a sudden explosion frightening the hostages. An Israeli soldier telling them, everything's all right, we've come to rescue you, be calm. Then the dangerous escape with bullets flying around them. You see two of the hostages running for their lives. Tonight, sources telling ABC News leading up to the raid, some Israeli special forces were disguised as Palestinian refugees looking for a place to live lying in wait in position before they were given the go command Saturday morning. The IDF saying it launched airstrikes after its troops came under fire, those strikes taking a terrible toll. The Hamas-run health ministry saying at least 270 Palestinians were killed, but Israel disputing that, saying about 100 were killed. Munira, who lives nearby, pleading for peace. We have hearts. We are a human being. We want peace to be all over the area. The Israeli call sign when the hostages were freed, we got the diamonds. Soldiers then escorting them onto a chopper with a high five before they were flown out of Gaza. The IDF also rescuing 26-year-old Noah Agamani from a separate apartment. You'll remember this video that shot the world, showing Noah screaming taken by terrorists on a motorcycle. Today, back in the arms of her dad, each relative cherishing the hugs after eight months of agony for loved ones they feared they might never see again. Almog Mirjan's family almost in disbelief. Tragically, his father dying just hours before he was freed. A relative kissing the 22-year-old's head. And this from his mum. Yesterday was my birthday and my wish came true. I haven't stopped smiling since. But she also told us there must be a deal with Hamas to get the other hostages out. I slept all night with a smile. What a big relief. That's what I want to happen for all the families of the hostages. David, Secretary Blinken meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu late today and was pressed on a report that the US could be considering cutting its own more limited deal with Hamas to bring home the eight remaining American hostages. Blinken did not comment, instead pointing to a ceasefire proposal that is already on the table. David? Tom Sufi Burridge in Tel Aviv. Tom, thank you. There's also this developing headline as we're on the air tonight reports. Four American teachers have been stabbed in China. All are members of Iowa's Cornell College and were part of a partnership 
with a university in China. Tonight, the college in Iowa is saying the four were attacked during a daytime visit to a public park. The college says they have been in touch with all of the teachers and all are expected to survive. No students were taking part in the program. Tonight, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds saying please pray for their recovery and their safe return home. Back here in the U.S. tonight into the massive fire near downtown Miami, more than 40 people rescued a worker was found shot nearby and news just in tonight of an arrest. It was the city's largest fire in 25 years, the extraordinary rescues. And tonight, that news coming in on the suspect, Victor Kendo, on the scene for us. Tonight, this massive inferno burning for hours at a four-story apartment building near downtown Miami. Officials say they haven't battled one like it in decades. A level three fire is something we haven't seen in 25 years in the city. The call's coming in shortly after 8 a.m. today. We got flames and smoke storm from the uh, third floor window. They need to put a jump on Dozens of units responding as heavy smoke filled the sky. The plumes visible for miles. Flames erupting from windows as the fire spread. At that chaotic scene, authorities finding a building worker with a gunshot wound to the torso outside. He was rushed to the hospital. We have the suspect who fired the gun in custody and who we suspect intentionally started the fire. That apartment building, home to mostly elderly residents. Firefighters carefully guiding some of them down ladders to safety. We have rescued over 40 people that were in the building, and our firefighters have demonstrated a tremendous amount of heroism. Tonight, everyone who is inside this building has been accounted for as firefighters continue to spray it down. City officials, the Red Cross, and the building's management company are working to help those displaced residents. David, we are glad everyone got out. Victor, tonight, thank you. We turn next this evening to the severe weather threat, record heat across multiple states, then heading east as the week wears on. Tonight, Florida bracing for potential flooding up to 20 inches of rain possible. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z with us here on a Monday night. Hi, Ginger. Hi there, David. You know, we're going to start with the imminent danger. That's the severe thunderstorm watches that are up for parts of Wyoming, South Dakota. They're in the high plains. And then also in Georgia and South Carolina. Damaging winds, the main hazard. But I want to point your eye to South Florida. Their big story the last couple months has been extreme heat and really dry conditions, but that is about to flip. The flood watches are up. The tropical moisture is about to come in from the southwest and just pour into anywhere south of Orlando, but especially there, Fort Myers and Naples through the end of this week. It is going to get really wet really fast. Excessive heat watches now extend to El Paso, but they stretch back the warnings up to the Sacramento Valley. And David, right here in New York, we could see our first 90 of the season, which is about two weeks beyond when we get it for the average. Ginger Z with us here tonight. We'll see you first thing in the morning. Thanks, Ginger. We turn now to the shocking damage to a passenger jet struck by a hailstorm coming into land. Part of the plane's nose ripped away. The cockpit windows shattered on the Austrian Airlines plane. Here's ABC's Trevor Roll tonight. Tonight, these stunning images showing the extreme damage a hailstorm caused to an Austrian Airlines plane. Part of the nose missing, the cockpit windows smashed, radar equipment left exposed. The plane shook very heavily. It felt like a really strong thunderstorm, um, actually the strongest that I've ever been into. Austrian Airlines says the aircraft encountered a thunderstorm during approach, which the crew said was not visible on the weather radar. 179 people were on board the flight from Palma de Mallorca, Spain to Vienna, Austria. The plane hitting that severe turbulence then pelted with hail, the crew making a mayday distress call. Marcus, a passenger on board, taking these photos after landing in Vienna. The landing was quite rough. We didn't know that the window was broken or anything else. The airline telling us tonight all this damage was done in just a few seconds of hail. Thankfully, no passengers were harmed. And David, Austrian Airlines says they have a team now assessing the damage. They're working to figure out how exactly this plane ended up flying through what they called a zone of hail. David? Pictures are really something. Trevor, thank you. Now to the terrifying moments at a rodeo in Oregon when a bull jumped a barrier heading right for spectators, flipping a woman into the air. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth now. New video tonight showing the chaotic moments after a bull jumps a barrier at a packed rodeo in Oregon, charging towards spectators. We have another victim from the bull. Trampled a couple of people. <laughs> the bull, named Party Bus, striking a man before racing toward the concession stands where it flipped a woman in the air. The announcer telling attendees to get to higher ground. Multiple people had um, gone under risers. 
they had tried to get in the bleachers, like gone inside the porta potties, gone inside the concession stands. The bull seen here running around the ring moments later, leaping that barricade. Multiple people recovering tonight. The sisters rodeo saying in a statement, the incident occurred during the final section of the bull riding event and the bull was secured by rodeo pickup men and immediately placed into a pin. And the sisters rodeo also saying that they're grateful to hear that everyone that was injured is now home and they're sending thoughts and prayers to all of those affected. David. Kena Whitworth tonight. Thank you, Kena. When we come back here, the breaking headline on a new Alzheimer's drug in the U.S. Also, Caitlin Clark tonight responding to news she did not make Team USA. She won't be going to Paris for the Olympics, what she's saying. And later here, the Antiques Roadshow and what a baseball bat is now worth all these years later. Tonight, news from the FDA on a new Alzheimer's drug. It is now one step closer to approval. An independent advisory panel voting unanimously to send the drug to the FDA where approval may come later this year. The drug donanumab would become the only, the second Alzheimer's drug available in the U.S. for patients with the disease to slow cognitive decline. Apple tonight jumping into the artificial intelligence race with what it's calling Apple Intelligence, a system it developed with the company OpenAI. Apple saying some of the features of its new personal intelligence system will be available this fall, including a revamp of Siri. iPhones will also be allowed to opt in to chat GPT. When we come back here tonight, Caitlin Clark responding to news she did not make Team USA. She won't be going to Paris and later right here, the Antiques Roadshow and what a bat is now worth. To the index of other news, Caitlin Clark tonight responding to news she's been left off Team USA just ahead of the Paris Olympics. The Indiana Fever Guard and top draft pick saying she's not disappointed, telling reporters it just gives me something to work for. There are reports tonight she is the top alternate. We do have a passing to note tonight. The Reverend James Lawson, a close advisor to Martin Luther King Jr., has died. Lawson was a disciple of nonviolence. He led workshops during the civil rights movement, helping peaceful protesters work to desegregate the South. Lawson was 95. When we come back here tonight, that moment on the Antiques Roadshow, the woman who loved baseball as a girl, but her baseball bat is now worth. ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, sponsored by Vivgard and Vivgard Hytrulo. Funny tonight here, the woman who so wanted to play baseball when she was a little girl. Years later, the moment on the Antiques Roadshow, a home run. Tonight, you know we love the Antiques Roadshow, and this evening, the updated appraisal that is definitely a grand slam. The story begins with an autographed baseball bat from Yankees legend Mickey Mantle. Nancy, the owner of the bat, saying it began when she was just eight years old and tried out for her local Little League team in 1963. She pretended to be a boy since girls were not allowed. They were having a Yankee bat boy contest. I made up a name. I put Jimmy Lotze. So when they called my house, my mother answered the phone. They said, oh, your son Jimmy just won the Yankee bat boy contest. And my mother started to laugh. She said, well, I don't have a son Jimmy, but it's my daughter Nancy. The organizers loved Nancy's enthusiasm and named her the honorary bat girl. And it turns out Mickey Mantle heard about Nancy and wanted to meet her. Mickey Mantle came to speak to me. And I had asked him, oh, Mickey, can you hit a run home run for me? He said, well, I can't promise you anything. I said, that's OK. And he hit a home run. And he came over to me. He said, here, Nancy, here's my bat. Just a few weeks later. I get this autographed picture in the mail. To Nancy, the cutest bat boy we have ever had, your pal, Mickey Mantle. It's incredible. I was so excited to see this. This is such a wonderful story. You really can't get a better bat than this. I would expect a bat like this to go for about $35,000. It's truly a fantastic piece. One of the Thank best you. pieces I've seen on this show. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I mean, my memories are awesome. 15 years ago, when she was first on the show, the bat was worth $35,000. And as you know, the show loves to go back and find those items to see if they've gone up in value. And right here tonight, Hi, David. the Antiques Roadshow appraiser, Simeon Lippman, and what that bat is now worth. Today, I value it closer to $75,000. And, you know, at auction, who knows what could happen? The sports memorabilia market in general has skyrocketed. So a piece like that with a story like that and provenance like that, you just can't beat it. Tonight, Nancy telling us she is never selling. For me, she says it's priceless, saying she is proud of her eight-year-old self and her determination when she showed up at that field. Oh, we love that story, too. She's not selling that bat. I'm David Muir. I hope to see you right back here tomorrow night. Good night.
Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.